Welcome back to the check-in. Today we're catching up with one of Great Britain's greatest female golfers. She's a six-time winner on the Ladies European Tour and has represented Europe three times in the Solheim Cup. All the way from the United States, it's the one and only Mel Reid. Mel, thank you so much for talking to us. I know you're out in Portland for the Cambia Portland Classic, which has been a little bit derailed by the situation with the forest fires out in the States. How is it? What's the situation? Yeah, it's bad. Um, I mean, I was traveling on Monday, so I was never planning on, on doing a session, practice session on Monday, but Monday was canceled. Uh, yesterday was playing a bit of a waiting game that ended up being canceled. Um, this morning was canceled. So we can only, can only go out for nine hole practice and uh, about three hours of work total. So um, yeah, it's bad. It's like I was just saying, it's, uh, it's very smoky. It's very eerily quiet in Portland, which is very unusual. It's one of my favorite spots on tour. So it's just very, very different this year, but Yes, 2020, it's, uh, it's all coming at us. But um, yeah, I mean, we're just thankful that we're hopefully able to play, even though they've cut it down to 54 holes. So yeah, just excited to get out there today and um, just to kind of see what it's like. You must be feeling pretty good about your game at the moment. The ANA Inspiration was last weekend, second major of the year. Finished tied seventh. You must be pretty happy with, with that and how you're playing since the, since the return of golf. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the break you know, due to, to COVID was, was great for me. I've always I've wanted to break now for about five years. I felt not burnt out at all, but I just felt like I just wanted to be in my own bed for more than about three weeks. And, you know, we got that obviously due to unusual circumstances, but um, yeah, I mean, it was great for me to kind of recharge and, and just work on a few things, um, you know, work on a few things, you know, away from golf as well, which was nice, but um, yeah, I mean, we're certainly glad to be back in the swing of things and, you know, I think Mike Wan and his staff at the LPGA are doing, you know, all that they can are doing a great job to try and get us playing. And um, yeah, it's just nice to be back on the course and seeing all the girls and the guys again and, and being around that atmosphere. You have been on the tour, both European now out on the LPGA for, for a long time. Very hard, isn't it, to step away as in a professional sports person and, and take a break unless it is forced. How are you feeling the benefits in your game? And do you think if you'd been able or sort of willing to take the step back a couple of years ago, you might have felt this recharge sooner. Yeah, for sure. But it's just difficult. You know, it's difficult to miss tournaments because we're all competitors at the end of the day. And, you know, as golfers, I think we're probably one of the hardest working athletes. Um, you know, we don't really like to take time off. So um, it was nice. It was nice to get a bit of a break and to kind of you know, go on my own schedule a little bit and actually plan ahead a little bit. So, and we got some really good work done. You know, I, I was very fortunate where I live in Jupiter, uh, Florida, like my golf course, the Floridian was never shut. So I got a lot of good money games in with the boys. I played with Brits Kepka quite a bit, uh, Chris Ventura, who's also a great player on the PJ tour. So I was just playing around with the boys quite a lot, which, you know, I think helped me tremendously. Um, you know, I kind of stepped away from the grind of the practice sessions and just started playing a lot. So I was very, very fortunate in that position to, to be able to still do that. A lot of girls didn't have that luxury. Um, and yeah, I just, I actually really enjoyed my time off. I enjoyed, you know, actually sitting by enjoying the pool and, you know, going to the beach. And like I said, people take for granted staying in one spot. People always want to travel. I want to do the opposite. I did not want to get on a plane. Um, so it was nice not to get on a plane for five months and just be in one spot. And yeah, I just you know, I tried to make the most of it. I, I read a lot, which is very unusual for me. My, my dad is going to be shocked when he hears this, uh, that I actually started reading. I don't think he even thought I could read. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was just, it was a nice recharge and I spent some time with my partner and my friends back home. And so it was good. It was a really good, it was a good, it was a good experience, obviously all things considered for me. How will you find the adjustment to going back to tournaments with obviously COVID protocols in place, Charlie Hull, didn't make it to the ANA inspiration after a positive test. How are you adapting to, I hate the phrase, but the new normal? It's different. Obviously, we're getting tested every week. Um, obviously, during our off weeks, we're getting tested. Uh, have to have temperature checks every single day. We have to check in every single day. There's a lot of emails flying around and it's very easy to dismiss one. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's certainly different. But it, you do get into the routine, the new norm, uh, very, very quickly. And like I said, we're just very thankful that a lot of sponsors have stuck with us and, and are able to put on events. And like I said, Mike is doing a great job at filling in gaps, um, you know, putting on that the new drive on event that was at Inverness, where the Solheim Cup is going to be next year. That was great to kind of get a look at that golf course. And it's an unbelievable golf course. It's going to be an unbelievable venue for the Solheim Cup. So we're very thankful for that. And 
it's just nice to be playing tournament golf again, honestly. Like, you know, you do miss it. You know, I said I wanted a break from it, but I very quickly was missing the competitive side of it. And like I said, it's just nice to be, even though it's very different, we obviously were having to stay in certain hotels. You know, we're fortunate that we can stay in Airbnbs, um, obviously limited amount of people. So my caddy's been staying with us. Uh, my partner's been able to travel because she's obviously working remote. So it's actually been really nice having her around and um, yeah, just making the most out of it. You know, it is a new norm, but you know, there's obviously opportunity there to, to like I said, make the most out of it and make it as normal as possible. Um, but yeah, tour life is certainly very different now. There was a lot of talk during that enforced lockdown about women's sport and, and where it would be when it came back. I know you're someone that's been quite vocal about the push for equality in golf and sport generally. How do you feel women's sport and women's golf in particular is doing since the restart? Are you seeing what you want to see in terms of a bit more coverage, a bit more attention? Um, I mean, I would always like to see more. <laughs> um, you know, I think that it was a great opportunity for sport um, to become male and female sports become a lot closer because people were desperate to watch sport. Um, I obviously don't know the ins and outs of it. And I know that, you know, the LPGA are doing their absolute best and the same with the LET to get more coverage, but you know, it's, it's a very difficult task. I know there's a lot more to it than just putting us on TV. Um, but I do certainly think that hopefully more people are watching us now. I, I, Again, I do, <laughs> I'm going to emphasize the phase that, you know, I do want us to be on TV a lot more because more people will be wanting to watch sport. Um, but yeah, I mean, I certainly think it's moving in the right direction and um, I'll keep voicing my opinion on it. And hopefully people will start listening to me, the better results I keep putting in, you know, people will have to not ignore me then. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I certainly think that this has been a good opportunity for women's sport for sure. You've been vocal in the past about golf's need, female golf's need for, for you know, uh, an Andy Murray, a Kobe Bryant, who always talked about the women's NBA and LeBron James has kind of picked up that mantle as well and how you need that in golf. Justin Rose has, has stepped up to the mark a little bit there, hasn't he? How important is it to have those male allies? I mean, it's huge. You know, living in America, I've kind of seen what the NBA has done for the WNBA, obviously with Kobe Bryant. Um, he was a huge advocate for the WNBA and, you know, LeBron James is and, you know, we need more people like that. And when I heard that, you know, Justin was doing that, you know, I reached out to him and said, you know, mate, this is awesome. Thank you so, so much. And I know that, you know, Liz Young, an LET player, a uh, veteran really now, and, she, you know, she had a huge impact on that as well. And, you know, I think that Megan McLaren is also a great advocate for that as well. Um, but I mean, him stepping up was huge. And all the girls that I spoke to about it said that it was awesome. You know, Kate Rose obviously had a huge impact on that as well. And she was there at most events. And, the girls were just, you know, elated with it. And, you know, that just goes to show when you have more voices from the men's game. And I think, you know, Tony Fee now is now, he mentioned about the AIG Women's British Open and also Tommy Fleetwoods. You know, we need more names like that to kind of step up and be a voice for us because we talk about the men. You know, we do watch the US Open, the Masters and obviously all the events because, you know, we love watching the guys play and it would just be nice if they mentioned that they like watching us play as well. You know, we are... Obviously, it's very different games, but, you know, we're good. Um, you know, Megan McLaren put out, you know, an extremely good article about stats. Um, you know, I think there were 17 players, I think, that she mentioned that had a better stat green and regulation than Rory. So we're good. The girls out here are very, very good. And, you know, it's just nice to finally have some voices, um, you know, from the men's side and, you know, supporting us. And it really does go such a long way for us. Absolutely. Let's talk about the Seoul Hand Cup then. I know you missed out on playing there last year, but were there as a vice captain, which must have been a great experience. Next year, out in the States, must be something you're very much working towards. How do you fancy your chances to be back on that team? Because I know it means a lot to you to compete and represent Europe. Yeah, I mean, it's in my blood. Um, you know, Seoul Hand to me is, is just an incredible experience. Um, it's something I always look forward to. And, you know, obviously I was good not to by my own doing and uh, not to be part of that team but I was very honoured when Katrina asked me to be a vice captain and it was a great experience for me honestly I kind of saw you know what all the backroom staff do and they do an incredible job to to make the players as at ease as possible and I thought Katrina and her staff were incredible uh, I think Katrina is an incredible captain to play under and so yeah obviously she's going to be captain next year and um, I would love to get myself on that team and not have her 
you know, have to, um, or not have me to rely on a pick, I should say. And I, I did say to Katrina, I promise not to put you in that position again. So I need to kind of stick by my word on that. And, but yeah, I mean, I love it. You know, obviously one of my best friends, Carlotta, we've kind of made a bit of a partnership over the last few Solheims and, you know, to play a Solheim Cup on American soil, um, especially in Toledo, where I know it will be heavily supported by the community is going to be an unbelievable experience and something I absolutely do not want to miss out on. So I'm trying my absolute hardest to get myself on that team. Well, Mel, good luck. We hope to see you there as part of that team and good, re good luck as well for the rest of this year. No matter what 2020 throws at you next, I'm sure you'll play some good golf through it. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.